Hello, I'm Minnesota's Secretary of State, Mark Ritchie. In addition to administering elections and registering business, our office runs the Safe at Home Address Confidentiality Program. This program started in 2007, so it's one of our newer duties, but it's also one of our most important. Through the Safe at Home Program, we are able to provide people who have safety concerns with an alternative address that has to be accepted as the participant's actual address. This allows people in fear to keep their real address confidential so the person who may want to harm them can't find them. More than 1,000 Minnesotans have already benefited from this program. These benefits are a direct result of our collaboration. The law enforcement community is a key partner for us. Hi, I'm Chief Mona Doman with the Maple Grove Police Department. I'd like to talk to you about Safe at Home. As a law enforcement official, it's important for you to be familiar with Safe at Home for two main reasons. First, you're very likely to interact with a victim who could benefit from the services Safe at Home provides. So knowing how to refer someone for Safe at Home enrollment is important. Secondly, you may interact with a Safe at Home participant during a traffic stop, for example. So we want to make sure that you are aware of the Safe at Home laws and what you can and cannot do. Now let's start with some background. As you've already heard, Safe at Home is a state program offered by the Minnesota Secretary of State's office in collaboration with local victim service providers. The program is for people who fear for their personal safety and was designed in collaboration with law enforcement. Safe at Home participants are primarily survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, or stalking. But people join for a variety of reasons. Program participants also include individuals who have safety concerns due to their profession, such as individuals who work in law enforcement or the criminal justice system who don't want their personal address to be accessible. This program is needed now more than ever, given all of the data that's available about people on the internet. During this brief DVD, you will learn more about Safe at Home through a program description and directly from other law enforcement professionals. At the end, I'll quickly summarize what you've learned and leave you with some closing thoughts. Hi, I'm Amelia Santanella with WCCO-TV. So how can Safe at Home help someone who's in fear for their safety? Safe at Home helps keep their home, work, and school addresses confidential. It does this by assigning them a substitute address, a specific post office box. Under Minnesota statutes, Chapter 5B, Participants are allowed to use their assigned safe at home address for all purposes. All public and private entities are required to accept it, including law enforcement. A participant cannot be required to disclose their actual address or the reason they're in safe at home. So the concept is simple. When joining the program, participants basically make a deal safe at home will protect the person's actual address. And in return, participants must notify safe at home if any of their contact information changes. Only the Safe at Home office knows a participant's real address, and that information is kept under security and is classified as private data. Safe at Home will never disclose any information about a participant without their written consent, and a participant can never give Safe at Home permission to disclose their real address. This policy is in place for their own protection. A couple of other things. Upon enrollment, applicants are required to disclose if they are involved in any way in a criminal court proceeding and the name of the prosecuting jurisdiction. Safe at Home notifies the court that the participant can thereafter be contacted using their Safe at Home address. And if a Safe at Home participant is on probation and the sentence has residency-related conditions, then the participant must provide their supervising agent with their actual address upon request. To be eligible to join Safe at Home, a person must, one, reside in Minnesota, two, be afraid for their personal safety or for the safety of someone else in their household, such as their child, three, not be a registered predatory offender. If you interact with someone who you think should consider joining Safe at Home who meets these criteria, provide them with a Safe at Home brochure or refer them to your local victim service provider. To enroll, all applicants have to meet face-to-face -face with a Safe at Home application assistant. An application assistant is a victim advocate who has been especially trained to help with the enrollment process. Currently, there are almost 200 application assistants throughout Minnesota. They can be found at different victim service agencies, such as domestic violence shelters and county attorney offices. 
more than likely, the victim service agency you typically refer victims to is a place people can go to enroll in Safe at Home. If it isn't, call the Safe at Home office. They'll contact the agency about having an application assistant on site. The application assistant and the interested applicant meet together and discuss whether joining Safe at Home is a good safety step for the person to take. Not everyone is a good candidate though. For example, Safe at Home will not be effective for someone who has lived at the residence for a long time and has no plans to move because their address is already accessible to others. The application assistant and the victim talk and together they make the decision that the person should join Safe at Home. Morning, sir. Good morning. I stopped you because your tabs were expired. Are you aware of that? I didn't know that. Okay. Do you have your driver's license on you today? I do. Could I see that, please? Mm -hmm. Okay. And is this your current address, sir? Yes. Okay. I see you have a P.O. box listed. Can you tell me why that is? Oh, I'm in the Safe at Home program. Okay. Do you have your participant card? I do. And could I see that, please? Yes. Hi, I'm Officer Ann Bogren with the Eden Prairie Police Department. Knowing if someone is in Safe at Home is easy. All participants share the same post office box address, so you can look for this. The address is P.O. Box 17370 in St. Paul. This is the address that most participants will have on their driver's license. An important part of their address is their lot number. This is what distinguishes their mail from that of the other participants. In addition, all Safe at Home participants are issued a Safe at Home participation card. You may ask to see this. Remember, if someone is in Safe at Home, you cannot ask them to provide their actual address and you cannot require them to tell you why they are in the program. If after seeing a participant's Safe at Home card, you still wish to confirm that they are currently in the program, you can call the Safe at Home office. If you provide a participant's name and lot number, the Safe at Home staff can verify if the person is currently in Safe at Home. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Derek Barnes from the Minneapolis Police Department. You might be wondering what happens if you need a Safe at Home participant's real address to make an arrest. There's a process in place to address those types of circumstances should they arise. You'll need to call the duty officer at the BCA and tell them that you need the real address of a Safe at Home participant and why you need the address. Then, the duty officer contacts the Safe at Home staff and makes the request. Safe at Home has staff on call 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, in case this type of assistance is needed. The only other way to get an address of a participant is to get a court order. Depending upon the circumstances, if what you actually need is to get a message to a participant and you don't have their telephone number, you can contact the Safe at Home office. So, for example, if you need, to, if you need a, a participant to contact you because they're a witness or you need to contact them because they are the next of kin and there's been an accident, you could call the Safe at Home office and ask that a message be passed on. Safe at Home staff will do their best to pass it on and may encourage the participant to give you their contact information for future reference especially if they are a victim or witness to a crime. You may be curious about 911 calls. Well, a 911 call from a home of a safe at home participant will operate the same as a 911 call from anyone else's home. If there is a landline, the home address will be displayed, not the safe at home P.O. box address. Hello. I'm Deputy Jonathan Jacobson from the Olmstead County Sheriff's Office. You may be wondering, what if I need to serve a participant? This is covered as well. Safe at Home is the agent for service of process for all participants. So you can either serve participants by mail using the participant's Safe at Home address, or if personal service is required, you can provide service upon the Secretary of State at their office in the State Office Building in St. Paul. This information is available on their website. You may encounter a Safe at Home participant who is a witness to a crime or who contacts law enforcement because they are the victim of a crime. In these cases, you must use their Safe at Home address on an incident report. 
judges and attorneys are aware of Safe at Home and the laws regarding it. More times than not, Safe at Home participants will not have you come to their house so they can report a crime. They will go to you. If they do need assistance at their home, they will ask you to use the Safe at Home address on the incident report and to make the incident report inaccessible to the public, per their right as a victim in Minnesota. If you know they are in Safe at Home and the participant is so flustered they forget to make this request, discuss this issue with them. Lastly, in regard to incident reports, work with the prosecutor to make sure the participant's location is in no way compromised, especially in small communities of Minnesota. Some wonder how orders for protection would work for participants in Safe at Home. There are two parts to this answer. First, most Safe at Home participants don't need orders for protection because the person they fear doesn't know where to find them. Secondly, participants typically have their Safe at Home address on their OFP, if they have one, because the court also has to accept their Safe at Home address. Now that you're familiar with Safe at Home, keep it in mind when interacting with victims. If you meet anyone who should consider joining, refer them to your local victim service agency. Also, be sure to keep in mind that the law requires law enforcement to accept the Safe at Home address. This will mean using a participant's P.O. Box address in cases in which you normally might not. Doing so will help ensure the effectiveness of each participant's personal safety plan. Thank you for working together to keep Minnesotans safe.